All right, we're going to go through the individual pieces of the First Amendment. And this video is specifically going to focus on freedom of religion. So um, there are five things protected, five freedoms protected by the First Amendment. And again, this video focuses on the first of those, which is freedom of religion. So there are a couple parts of the First Amendment that specifically relate to religion. Um, the first part uh, reads, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Uh, and that's referred to as the Establishment Clause, as kind of like the wording of that part sort of indicates. Um, this really just prevents the government from creating their own religion and forcing people to follow it or endorsing a particular religion, favoring a particular religion, uh, punishing a particular religion. They can't really play favorites, right? You know, it's all about establishing a separation of church and state. So the government itself cannot establish, endorse, or favor a particular religion. Um, so the Supreme Court often has to hear lots of cases in which people are accusing the government uh, or some part of the government, whether it be the state or federal government, of like violating the Establishment Clause. So what the Supreme Court has put together is something we known as like the lemon test. Um, these are like basic guidelines that the Supreme Court has to like go by in the future to determine whether or not the government is violating the Establishment Clause. The Lemon Test is a three-part test that the Supreme Court uses to determine whether a law violates the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment, which says that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. The three parts of the Lemon Test are as follows. First, a law must have a secular purpose. Second, the law's principal or primary purpose can neither advance nor inhibit religion. And finally, the government may not be excessively entangled in religion. The Lemon Test came from the 1971 Supreme Court case, Lemon v. Kurtzman. At issue was whether the government could provide state funding to private religious schools. Two states, Pennsylvania and Rhode Island, each passed statutes that provided financial assistance to private schools, many of which were religious. This funding subsidized the cost of textbooks and instructional materials for non-religious subjects, and it also supplemented teachers' salaries. In the majority opinion, Chief Justice Warren Burger applied the three-part test to the statutes at hand. First, the statutes did have a secular purpose, as they were intended to educate students. Second, the statutes were not intended to advance or inhibit religion. However, the Lemon Test's third prong, that the government could not be excessively entangled in religion, was found to have been violated. The court reasoned that government oversight would be required to ensure that the funds were being used strictly for secular purposes, thereby creating excessive government entanglement with religious schools. As a result, the laws were deemed unconstitutional. Those in favor of the Lemon Test argue that it provides manageable standards by which the Supreme Court can evaluate cases pertaining to the Establishment Clause. Thus, having this set of guidelines would provide some uniformity in how the courts evaluate and rule in these cases. Others argue that the Lemon Test is too vague and has been selectively invoked as a means of striking down disfavored laws. All right, so that gives you a little overview of what the Lemon Test is. It's just the guidelines used by the court to decide whether or not the Establishment Clause is being violated. Uh, and again, it just determines whether or not there is like an Establishment Clause issue or if something else is going on. So again, it went over sort of like the three parts of the Lemon Test. The idea is the guidelines are that, um, you know, it, it can't like have a purpose of advancing a particular religion or hurting religion. Um, it, it really is for like non-religious purposes and there's no like excessive entanglement. So the one that was mentioned in the video, Lemon v. Kurtzman, which where funding would go to these like private religious schools was deemed to violate the Lemon Test, right? And the Establishment Clause. But like an earlier case, Everson v. Board of Education, right? In 1947, um, that, that didn't violate it. That was a different type of case in which taxpayer funds were being used to send children on public school buses owned by like the local school district to like send those like kids to private school, like if they wanted to go. 
So like now, like you notice if you take an advocate school bus, like sometimes you might have students on the bus that might be going to like a private school. Um, and the Supreme Court argued that like that doesn't violate the Lemon Test because you're not trying to advance or hurt a religion. You're just trying to get kids to school safely. So that's like the background on the Lemon Test. That's why Lemon v. Kurtzman was struck down, like paying salaries of private school teachers, but like Emerson v. Board of Education and, and the busing was allowed to 